Hi everyone, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Okay, it's a Saturday morning, it's story time once again, and I've got a mammoth task of reading out five stories for you today. Just out of interest, somebody asked me the other day how many uh, individual stories I've got on my YouTube channel, and honestly speaking, I don't know, you know, because I only started numbering them after I'd already uploaded maybe a hundred, uh, there was a guy one time, he said, look, I was read I'm halfway through one of your stories and I can't find it, you know, how can I find it? And he said, why don't you uh, number the volumes? And I thought, great idea. And I started doing it once I'd already put out about 100, but that must have been three years ago. So a rough guess, I don't know, what do you think? 500, 600? Let me know in the comments, because if you've been there from day one, uh, I'd love to know what you think, how many stories are here. Okay, today's stories, um, I've got five, as I say, now, I, one other thing I want to just mention quickly, I'm getting more and more comments from people saying or messages, uh, you know, I've heard this story someplace before. Okay, look, I can't check every single YouTube channel out there to see if a story uh, that I read out is on their um, channel. There's so many channels popping up now, especially here in Thailand. It's, it's like everybody seems to ha have a, a camera and a selfie stick now. It's completely changed. So... The reason I number the uh, the actual stories, they have a timestamp on them. If you look in the description, there's a timestamp. Uh, you can just, if you think you've heard it before, you can skip forward to the next one. And th that way you don't need to keep writing to me and saying, you know, I've heard this on another channel. Or I've heard this on your channel. Because sometimes I do read out stories twice that I might have read out five years ago when I had 200 subscribers. I'm up to about 55,000 plus now. So... Obviously, those people, uh, a lot of people who have joined after that, they wouldn't have heard these stories. Right, well, I'm rambling on again, so I'm going to get straight into the first of five stories. My story happened in Los Angeles. I was a shy introvert and had difficulty talking to women. So I stayed alone throughout school. I graduated from high school in 1974 and attended junior college for two years, but got bored and left. After working some security jobs, my friend got me a job with a large aerospace company in the South Bay in 1979. With this job, I made a comfortable salary. Eventually, I moved up in my job and the company gave me special access to work in what was called the Black Vault. The only sound was the various machines and no windows to look out of. One of the requirements of my job was no contact with foreign nationals. All contact had to be reported, no matter how minor. Foreign contacts could cost me my job, so I kept to myself. Moving forward to 2010, I received my layoff notice with no hope of being recalled. My job was abolished. In 2011, I decided to get my license to drive a tractor semi-trailer truck. I got my Class 1 license, hired on with a company driving cross-country. Not working in a windowless room was a joy. Money wasn't great, but I had, I had a lot of fun. In 2014, I was making a delivery in the Thai town section of Los Angeles. After my delivery, I went to a CVS drugstore to buy supplies. While shopping, a young beautiful girl asked me to help her with her prescription. I saw she was Asian and her English was not very good. I helped her with the prescription and started to leave. If this happened while I was still working at the aerospace company, I would not have helped her. She was a foreign national. She grabbed my arm, hugged me and kissed my cheek. I almost fainted. A beautiful girl kissing me like that. She said she's taken me to lunch to thank me. She said her name was Pom. She was Thai and 30 years old. We had a great time, but I told her I, I had to get my next load off. She asked what my work was, and I told her I drove a truck. She asked to see my truck. She was amazed at the size of it. She told me I was a kind person and she wanted to stay in touch. Pom helped me add her to the Line app. I'd never heard of Line prior to this. I asked her what she did for work and she told me she was a trade show model. I had to leave so she made me promise to stay in touch. She called me online every day in the morning and evening and I thought it was strange as we had just briefly met in the drugstore. But I enjoyed talking to her. We made plans to meet when we both were able to. We met two months after I'd helped Pom. We spent the day together and went to drop her off at her room. She invited me in with her. Her roommate, who Pom called her sister, was there. I found out later the roommate was not really her sister. 
The roommate left and Pom asked if I had a girlfriend. I said no and Pom said she was my girlfriend now. The aerobics was something I have never experienced before. We met about every two months. I was on top of the world. I was thinking marriage, getting a local job and spending my life with her. While stopping at the Wat Thai Temple in North Hollywood to take a break, I saw Pom at the temple. She was surprised to see me as much as I was to see her. I asked her what was going on. Why didn't you tell me you were in Los Angeles when we talked online? She said she was in Chicago. She said she wanted to make me make merit at the temple. I told her I need to talk to her. After a 20 minute wait, I peeked into the temple she had left through the back door. She told me later she was sorry, but she had called an Uber taxi service and had to leave. I didn't know what to make of this. We made plans to visit Thailand together to go to Royet in Isan and meet her family. I booked two air tickets premium coach on China Airlines. She wanted her tickets to show her parents, which I gave her. She asked me to buy her a gold necklace and bracelet. So her parents would know I could support her. I did, and they both cost me $500 each. She went back to work, so... So did I. A few weeks later, I saw a credit charge back on my credit card statement. I called and found out a refund was requested on the airline ticket. I kept it to myself until I met Pom. She asked the same. I confronted her and she admitted to trying to cash in her ticket. She said she can't return to Thailand because she overstayed her tourist visa two years ago. I told her why she didn't tell. Why didn't you tell me? I asked her to be truthful with me. She told me her family was very poor. She worked as a bar girl in Bangkok and spent time with men. Friends told her she could make more money in the US. She paid a visa company and got a tourist visa. I asked if she worked as a trade show model and she said no. She worked as a full-time serv uh, full service escort. The aerobics I had with her, other men paid for. I was very annoyed, as you can imagine. She said she could still spend time together. She also said that I gave her life stability and made her feel normal. I told her I couldn't continue a relationship with a woman who is having intimate relations with other men. But if she stopped being an escort, I would support her. She said I couldn't afford to support her and she pulled out a roll of cash. I couldn't say anything and walked away. I had myself checked for STDs. I was lucky there was nothing, nothing more to be said. She sent a message that she would return the gold I bought seven years on and I'm still waiting. No surprises there, ha ha. Oh well, lesson learnt. Not a crash and burn story, but definitely a hard landing with a little damage. I made it to Thailand in early 2017. I don't drink, but I visited Nana, Soy Cowboy and Hua Hin, etc. The bars were loud, the girls were beautiful, but they were superficial. I met a Thai woman on a dating app. She's close to my age. I went back to Thailand to see her. We hit it off and I married her after a year. She has a lovely daughter that calls me dad. I retired early and I live in Thailand and I return to the US when I need to. If I never met Pom, my life would have been very different. I wish her well. I hope she found happiness and is living a happy life. So there you go. It's a, a nice happy ending to that story. It sounds to me like the girl Pom, she's obviously, um, it's very difficult to get into the USA for uh, Thai girls, Asians uh, generally, on tourist visits now. Even with guys, I, I did a video a while back with a, a company who specializes in this, and they, they said, although you can still get kind of tourist visas to get into the UK, uh, America is, is completely different. It's very, very difficult now. But if she did go in on a tour of visa, I'm guessing, obviously, she had a limited time and she was trying to snag somebody real, real quick where, you know, with an opportunity to get married and obviously get a green card and stay in the country. That's what it sounded like. Right, straight into story number two of five. I'm a regular visitor to Thailand. On a recent trip, after arriving and dropping my bag off at the hotel, I went straight to Soy Cowboy and found a bar to have a drink. Within a few minutes, a beautiful girl joined me for drinks. I am not an idiot, so soon I worked out that she was a ladyboy, but we were talking about football and cars while having a few beers, so it was no problem. I knew I wasn't going to go back to the hotel with her. Anyway, we were sitting on the patio at the front of the bar and I pointed out to her some strange lights in the sky flying past. I explained to her that it was a UFO and we were very lucky to see it. 
Much to my surprise, she started laughing at me and claimed that it was just a normal aeroplane. Obviously, I got very angry at her and told her that she is wrong and she needs to do her own research and not believe everything the government tells her. I have seen several UFOs. I know what I'm talking about. She insisted that it was a normal aeroplane. Our voices got louder and louder and we argued. Suddenly, we were surrounded by around five ladyboy friends. I knew I was in big trouble, so without hesitation, I jumped up and ran out of the bar. I was running down the road, dodging around scooters and pickup trucks with multiple ladyboys chasing me. I was able to gain some distance as I was wearing trainers. I ducked around a corner. As soon as I was out of sight of my pursuers, I ran into a bar. The ladyboys didn't see me going into the bar and they ran right past. I sat down for a beer while I waited for the heat to die down. While I was drinking my beer, I was approached by a stunning girl, a real woman this time. Her name was Tick. She was very beautiful, about 24 years old, with gorgeous skin and a very nice smile. Tick and I had a lovely chat over a few drinks. I told her about the UFO I had just seen. She said that she's never seen a UFO before, but she does believe in them. So it was clear she is not totally stupid. I was really enjoying myself and finding myself becoming attracted to her. Enough time passed that I wasn't worried about the ladyboys who were hunting for me, so I paid Tick's bar fine and we left. We grabbed a quick bite to eat and a few more drinks and then went up to my hotel room. I did see three of the ladyboys who were looking for me near the hotel entrance, but luckily they were looking in the wrong direction and we were able to sneak in unseen. Tick and I had a great aerobic session. In the morning, we had a quick aerobic session again, but she had to leave at 7 a.m. as she was going to teach the real aerobics. I arranged to meet her again that night at her bar. I spent the day sightseeing and then went to the bar later and had a few more drinks before taking her back to my room for some more aerobics. In the morning, she said she had to go teach aerobics again, but invited me to go with her. I put on my workout gear and went to her aerobics class. I was the only man there, but it was really fun to do the aerobics with all the women and Tick was a really good instructor and they played Western music at this aerobics class. Brilliant. After the aerobics class, we went back to the hotel for an aerobics session and then I said goodbye to Tick. Later that afternoon, Tick and I were going for a walk and happened to walk past the first bar where I met the ladyboy. Unfortunately for me, the ladyboy was on the patio again and she recognised me and yelled, UFO man, UFO man. I didn't hesitate and ran back to the safety of my hotel before she could round up her friends. The next day, I moved into another city where I would not be recognised by the ladyboys. I didn't see any more UFOs on this trip, but I would always remember the lesson I learned, which is never argue with ladyboys. For everyone travelling to Thailand, please learn this lesson as well. If a ladyboy disagrees with you or doesn't believe what you are saying, just let it go. Do not get into an argument. It is not worth the risk. Thanks for reading out my story, Peter. Soon I will send you a story about my Western wife who came with me to Thailand and she got herself into a bit of trouble. Okay, <laughs> trouble with ladyboys there. I was quite surprised when I read that because normally I, I have seen uh, ladyboys attack guys, but it's been in very extreme cases. Uh, somewhere like Walking Street in, in Pattaya, uh, you'll get a guy who's totally wasted. He's leathered. He's gone. He don't know where he is. And maybe he has some kind of conversation with a lady boy. He says the wrong thing or he pushes her and that's it. He's done for. You know, they jump out the woodwork and they beat him up. I've even seen a picture of a guy who's got a stiletto heel sticking out of his head. You know, unbelievable. But it, the, there are those pictures out there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What he's saying is he had an argument with her and she rounded up all these ladyboys and they ran out everywhere. I mean, I've never seen it. I've seen, I've seen like arguments between ladyboys and guys, but unless you push one or hit one or say something really bad, normally they just raise their voices and that's the end of it. But to actually chase somebody out of Soy Cowboy and look for them, uh, I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, thank you to the story to the guys. I'm not saying I don't believe you, it's just I haven't seen that before, okay? Right, into story number three. I became fascinated with Thailand while stopping over in Bangkok airport. I was on my way to Taiwan to visit the parents of my future wife. Long story short, I didn't marry my Taiwanese girlfriend because it just didn't feel right at the time. 
She is very happy now and I have no regrets with the decision. Part of the reason was on my brief visit to Bangkok airport, I'd felt the charm of the Thai people, the warm welcoming smile and the way they greeted you. Thai people smile so much that it makes you want to constantly smile back. From that one stopover, I decided to convince my friends to visit Thailand, visiting Bangkok and Phuket in 2012. It was very strange landing in Bangkok for the first time. Being from England, I couldn't figure out why everything was so cheap. I then realized that things aren't cheap in Asia, things are just overpriced in the West. Jet lagged and confused about what to do, I then smelled the famous Thai dishes being cooked on the street. I saw an elderly man using a wok while his wife would prepare the fresh ingredients. I decided to try this authentic street food. After handing over my Thai baht, I realized that I've just spent 50 baht for something that gave me a full stomach. Amazing. I was alone as my friends were arriving the next morning in Phuket, so I had a night of wandering from bar to bar. The next morning, I had booked a VIP car from Bangkok to Phuket. The car wasn't quite VIP. It was just a minibus full of strangers. There was a Swedish girl, two chilled out Dutch guys, two young skating type rebellious Western guys who would call each other dudes and a middle aged over opinionated angry Western guy with his Thai wife. A car full of eight strangers all expecting a VIP experience only to be crammed into a 10 year old Toyota people carrier with stale aircon. So it came as no surprise that we were all disappointed and the angry Westing guy had expressed himself to the driver by asking where was his VIP car. The Thai driver didn't seem to understand him. Staying calm, he kept a poker face only for the angry Westing guy to shout even louder. Like the Thai driver would magically understand English because he was now raising his voice. Oh yeah, here's your private VIP car, sir. I understand English now. I didn't before because you were talking at a normal level. So doing the English gentleman thing, I decided to calm the angry Western guy down by explaining that we were all in the same boat, or in this case, minibus. The journey was to last for 12 hours and although very cramped, my karma was being instantly rewarded. That day, as I was squashed up next to the Swedish girl, Everything about her was very Swedish, the blonde hair, accent and her openness towards rubbing body parts next to strangers. She was a kind of Swedish girl who would enter a sauna naked after she danced naked on the beach at 3am during their 100 days of sunshine in Sweden. To add to my journey, I was seated next to two fun loving Dutch guys who were a joke a minute. Between the four of us, we managed to calm the angry Westing guy down. We went from, I want to knock this Thai man's block off to, I'll just sit quietly in the rear back seat. The 12 hours didn't seem like 12 hours because we were constantly making jokes about everything that goes wrong in Thailand. How a VIP car is not really a VIP experience and how you can find a McDonald's fast food restaurant in a hospital. I quickly learned that showing the soles of your feet in public to Thai people is considered very rude but shooting ping pong balls out from one's private parts is fine. I've always been a very serious person, but Thailand really changed my out outlook on life. How we can choose to be angry towards a situation like the angry Western guy, or we can choose to see the funny side of things like the two Dutch guys did. Not only did I have the most amazing road trip of laughter, I woke up in Phuket with the sweaty head of a Swedish blonde on my shoulder. We later exchanged details and YouTube will not approve of what happened next. My first memory of Phuket was visiting the bars at night time. There was a bar called the Freedom Bar owned by a British guy who served time in HM prison, hence the name of the bar. After he served his time, he was a strange, it was a strange feeling walking into a bar and being greeted by so many girls. Although it wasn't a bar where you can take the girls home, all the staff were so welcoming. The owner then gave us a guide on what to do and what bars to visit. The next bar we visited, we, jumped, we were jumped on by the girls. We were all very strong guys and the girls jumped on us and started making funny noises that resembled a squeak in bed. We were laughing so hard that I struggled to stand up straight. I almost fell to the floor and had to use the bar top to support myself. A girl jumped off me and she jumped onto my not so strong friend and they both ended up on the floor. 
I laughed so hard that I nearly wet myself. The night went on and at one point I needed to use the toilet. Stumbling to the toilets, I was amazed at the ice-filled urinals and it was oddly satisfying melting them with my beer-fueled pee. And then to my horror, my neck snapped twice and then a little Thai man put me into a headlock, something that macho man Randy Savage would do to Hulk Hogan during wrestling mania. My hands being tied up, I had no control over where to point my manhood. He would then crack my back and as he did so, pee would go to the next urino. After I finished peeing, I left a 100 baht tip for that very Thai experience. On reflection, no guide in the world can prepare you for this. Beware of men snapping your neck in the toilets and asking for your money, said no part of the Lonely Planet book. The next time I needed to pee, I would wait for someone to go before me so that he was busy. But what a unique Thai experience. On my meeting my first bar girl, I fell head over heels with a girl called M. She was so beautiful and had the smile of a thousand supermodels. If her auntie was a celebrity, it would have been Lucy Liu in her prime. M had beautiful cheekbones, a slim body with golden brown hair. Her eyes just glowed and her lips just spelt, take my money. This seemed too good to be true to be able to take this gorgeous girl away while paying for a guy's drink and a bar fine. She sat on the back of my scooter and hugged me while the wind went through our hair. We took a midnight walk along the beach with the moonlight guiding us. We relaxed on the sun lounges to gaze at the sky. And then out of nowhere, Em abruptly gestured that we had to go quickly because we were being watched. We could see a man on his motorbike in the distance lighting a cigarette and exposing his face. She said she wanted to go back to the bar and thought this was odd as I had already paid for the bar fine. Being the nice guy that I am, I made no fuss and drove her back to the bar. Confused and really frustrated, I decided to take a quiet walk along the seafront listening to the tranquil sounds of the Phuket waters with minimal street lighting to find my way home. I walked up and down with a can of beer in my hands. To my horror, I was approached by a skinny looking Thai man with teeth like a lab rat. He pulled out a steak knife and threatened to stab me. You boom boom M, shaking with his knife. He got louder and louder. It instantly occurred to me that I was being followed all that time from flirting with M in the bar to our romantic beach walk. M was aware of this and this explains her abrupt departure. I took the Buddhist approach of calming him down palms open and asking him what was wrong. He told me that M was his girlfriend. I could see right away that he was madly in love with M and all that jealousy in him had built up to pull a knife out on a stranger. I stared straight into his eyes and decided he didn't have the eyes of a really bad guy. He also didn't have the strength to dispose of my body. I was twice the size of him. I was tempted to disarm him. I had to slap myself across the face and remind myself that I'm not Steven Seagal and it's just easier to calm down rather than to resort into violence. I ended up being very open with him and assured him that I didn't know she had a boyfriend. It wasn't like she was wearing I have a boyfriend badge or anything, was it? He would never have understood my sarcasm and he then put his steak knife back into his pocket and drove off into the distance. Taking a large gulp of my beer, I rolled back to the bar and I explained all this to the bar owner, who was an English-speaking Australian man. He was very understanding and the next night, M had come to apologise to me. She explained that she broke up with her boyfriend before working at the bar. She then went back to my hotel room with me. I didn't have to pay any bar fine and she didn't want any money the morning after. She was truly sorry she had put me through that experience. I don't know what M said to her ex-boyfriend, but he didn't pull a knife out on me again. I didn't believe M's story of breaking up with her Thai boyfriend. I just enjoyed her company while it lasted. I felt bad for M's situation, how she would have to work in a bar to support her family and put her childhood sweetheart through all of this jealousy. So for the rest of the two-week holiday, my friend and I would visit the bar daily, ring the bell and buy all the girls a drink. Get some hugs and move on to the next bar. We took nothing seriously and just enjoyed the Thai bar girl experience right up to the end of our holiday. If M's jealous ex-boyfriend didn't pull a knife out on me, I would have spent the rest of my holiday with M. 
I feel fortunate that I had a wake-up call with a knife experience early on while visiting Thailand so as not to let my guard completely down in the future. I'm also thankful that Thai people are humble, kind and reasonable people if you're honest with them. Everything happens for a reason and I promise myself to never even think about bringing a bar girl to meet my parents. So that's a great story, very well written as well. I mean, often when I get stories in, uh, I put them through spell checks and grammar checks and everything, and some of them are really badly written, but this one in particular was very, very good. A uh, couple of things I'll mention on this story, it is normal in Thailand, in uh, the entertainment areas, when you go in, when you go, when guys go into the toilet, I don't know about the girls, I've been into a girl's toilets, but when you go into the guy's toilets, there's often a guy in there, and he's not getting a salary, he's relying on tips, so what he'll do, is when you're standing at the urinal, it's really weird if you've never experienced this before, he'll come up behind you and he'll start massaging your shoulders and moving your head. And for guys who haven't been here before, it kind of freaks them out, but uh, it's just a service that they provide. And if you don't want it, while you're still looking at the wall, you just shake your head like that and they, they know not to do it. But they also, they give you the soap and the towel and there's a little dish on the table there for you to drop a few baht in. Uh, I, I always drop 20 baht in. As I say, the guy isn't on any kind of salary uh, and it helps him out. You know, he's standing in them uh, toilets probably six, seven hours every night to make a, a few baht so he can eat and feed his family, okay? It looks like this is gonna be quite a long uh, upload, so let's go straight into story number four. I have been to Thailand 18 times over the years. Here is my first experience of being conned. Not a long story. Five years ago, I went to Thailand on my own for the first time. I had no clue about cons or scams. I arrived late at night around 11 p.m. and was shattered, so decided to have a shower, go downstairs to the local 7-Eleven and buy some beers for my room. My hotel was on Jomtien Beach Road. The first day I walked along the beach, just a relaxing stroll and heard music. I like coming from an open air bar. Gil Gilbert O'Sullivan, Queen, Bowie, Rod Stewart, etc. So I decided to go in for a beer. As soon as I was sat down, I had this gorgeous girl sit beside me, and as you do, I bought her a couple of ladies' drinks. She explained I could bar find her, and she could come out of the bar with me to keep me company. So I arranged to go back to that bar later and bar find her. We got on great, and I bar find her for the rest of my holiday. I went out for eight nights. On my second night with her, I was not sleeping and caught her looking through my pockets. I was not stupid and I put all of my money, cards and phone in my safe uh, when she was using the bathroom. I confronted her and told her to get out. She grabbed onto my leg and started crying. Being Me being naive back then decided to give her another chance. Anyway, my holiday came to an end and I had no more problems that I was aware of. Later, I decided to go back to Thailand and had kept in touch with my bar girl called Bong while back home. When I arrived in Thailand, Bong met me at the airport. We got back to Jomtien and the first couple of nights we went to the bar, played pool and listened to music. Everything was fine until I told her on the third night that I wanted to spend a night alone as I had an upset stomach due to eating some bad food. I told her I would, be, I would visit her bar the next day. That night I was alone, my stomach got better and I went downstairs and got talking to a Danish guy who was going on a BART bus to Pattaya. He asked if I wanted to join him and his friend. I said, why not, as I had not been to Pattaya, so yes. I would join them. We drank all night and I got my bill and it was about 800 baht. In the morning, I started to wonder what was going on. I did not know the prices and to be honest, I never checked the prices or looked at my bill slips in the pot on the table. Alarm bells rang. I had been out with these Danish guys and only spent 800 baht and I'd had a great night and plenty of beer. When I went to Bong's bar, I never had much change out of 3,000 baht, and that was for drinks for only two of us, and I was never drunk. Anyway, long story short, Bong came to my hotel the next day, and that night we went to her bar. I was ready this time when we played pool. I kept watching the bar and my check pot on my table, and my suspicions were confirmed. I see the guy behind the bar put a piece of paper in my bill pot. I said nothing, went back to the bar, ordered another drink for me and Bong. We played pool again and I kept watching. Lo and behold, I seen one of the barmaids putting a piece of paper in my bill pot. I still said nothing until I was ready to leave. On my previous visits, I'd never counted the slips in the pot. Trust, I suppose. These people are so nice, they'd never rip me off. 
Plus, I didn't want to look cheap by going through my individual bills. Anyway, I went to the bar and the girl behind the bar picked up my bill and went to total it. I think she said 2,700 baht. I said to her, let me see the bills. I looked at the slips and said, that's mine, that's mine, and then that's not mine, that's not mine, that's not mine. They had been padding my bill. I told her that I'm not paying my drinks. I never ordered, they are not my bills. My real bill actually came to around 700 baht. Some Australian guys heard me and asked me what was wrong. I showed them the bills. The bar staff said, sorry, mistake. As you know, it was not a mistake, but me being treated as an idiot. Now, I don't care. I don't check every bill before I pay now. Plus, I look at my bill pot to make sure it's not pregnant by putting baby bills into it. Bong got her marching orders and I never went back to that bar. Lesson learned, always keep an eye on your bills. So this is something that's very common in, in the entertainment areas is bill padding. And what it is, they, they're slipping in extra bills. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's getting really mod, much more modern here now. They don't tend to slip bills in. Most, a lot of the bars now, the bigger bars anyway, they have a continuous running bill. And when you order a drink, they take that check, the one, the the bill that's already come from the cash register out of the pot, take it back and they just add it and it's the same kind of bill. Some guys think the solution to this is paying for every drink individually, but you'll become very unpopular very, very quickly if you do that because you're just making the waitresses uh, work, you know, several times harder than if they just had to come once. The best way to do it is any way you go is when you get the bill, just pick it up in front of the waitress, look at it, smile and put it back in. When you get another drink, do exactly the same and by, by the second or third bill or the next time you go in there, they'll know not to pad your bill because you've checked it it's all important is to do that first one in front of a smile and give her the the thumbs up as it were okay it, it's not so much these days this is something from the old days uh, people have wised up the internet you know there's lots and lots of videos not only on my channel but on hundreds of channels advising people of things to watch out for and not to do so i think it's kind of fading away but you've still got to uh you know be on top of your game especially when you when you've had a few you know right okay we're going into the final story today as i said quite a, a longer upload today this is a story about my first night in Thailand. It was Christmas Eve 2019 in Chiang Mai. I checked into an Airbnb that I had booked up online for my Thailand trip. At around 11 p.m. I left my Airbnb and headed down to the old town in Chiang Mai. I was heading towards a bar complex that I had found on Google Maps. Walking through the streets of the old town was great. The buildings reminded me of Japan. I arrive at a beer bar complex at around 11 p.m. I went into a bar called Zoe in Yellow. It was packed on this night and all the girls were wearing Santa costumes along with quite a few young Western customers. A few beers later and I was eyeing the crowd for a girl to introduce myself to and an absolute stunning girl in a gold dress joined the crowd. She was beautiful, very innocent looking. The dress was conservative, showed no cleavage and not too short. This was exactly what I was looking for. However, she was surrounded by six of her girlfriends who were dancing together in a group. They were all enjoying themselves, but they seemed not to be interested by any of the guys in the bar. Now, I should tell you that I have never introduced myself to a Thai girl before. I have always met girls through Tinder and other online apps. Furthermore, I dance like a five-legged donkey and I'm, not, and I'm a little shy. I don't really like the company of large groups. The idea of approaching a group of six or seven girls who are minding their own business and trying to strike up a conversation with one of them was just too daunting for me. I just could not get up the nerve to say hello. A little while later, when Zoe in Yellow closed and I left disappointed, I eventually found myself entering a nightclub called Spicy. Inside was completely packed and I could barely move. Anyway, I saw a girl standing nearby. She wasn't a stunner, but she was pretty. Nowhere near as beautiful as the girl in the gold dress, but nice. I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. I went over to the girl and just said hi. She said hi back to me. And as we began chatting, I quickly became aware that she was very happy with lots of physical contact. Clearly, this was a girl who was used to being picked up by Western guys. She certainly wasn't shy, that's for sure. As the time passed, she insisted that I buy her and her friends a few rounds of drinks, which I happily did. As I was on holiday and I didn't mind spending the money. A little later, the three of us leave the club, which had been very dark inside, and to my dismay, as we get outside under the streetlights, I see 
that my pretty girl has more facial hair than me. It goes without saying that I was not very, I was very disappointed, but as I was very drunk by now and quite tired, I wasn't in the mood to find another girl, so I decided to stick with this one. The friend then drove the three of us on her scooter to get some food and some more drinks, which I paid for, of course. After we were finished eating, the friend then drove me back to my Airbnb, where I was in for more disappointment. This girl decided that she didn't want to stay with me and just drove off without, with her friend. Which leads me on to my next mistake, which was not accepting that the night had been lost and I should have called, uh, called it an end and just gone to bed. One more thing that I should add to this point in the story is that I very rarely drink and at this point I was the most drunk that I'd ever been for years so you can guess that the mistakes are going to be coming thick and fast. I decided to get a taxi and told him to take me to a place where I could get a girl. The driver promptly took me to a large karaoke venue on the outskirts of town. No doubt he received a fat commission for delivering a drunk foreigner to the venue. I stumbled inside and I was led to a room where I could choose a girl to join me. They asked me if I wanted something to drink and a snack. I said yes. They promptly brought in several drinks and plates of food without even asking me what I wanted or giving me a menu. I wasn't really enjoying the, the venue. I just wanted to take the girl back to my place. So after about 30 minutes, I asked for the bill which was brought to me by a man who placed the bill on the table and then stood guard in the door so that I could not leave. At this point, even my drunk brain knew something was wrong. Sure enough, I looked at the bill and it was for 20,000 baht, about 500 pounds or 550 US dollars. I knew that I have been scammed. 500 pounds for a few drinks and some snacks. Now here comes my biggest mistake. I picked up the bill and I threw it on the floor, walked over to the Thai man, guard in the door, threw him across the room and opened the door. Whereupon, I was charged by about eight Thai men who easily pushed me to the floor, kicking and punching me while I was down. Even the girl that I had been sitting with joined in, stomping on me. It's interesting to note that wherever you are in the world, when men fight, there is an unwritten rule not to hit, hit each other in the private parts. Women, however, don't seem to have this inhibition and it became clear that this girl was making it her intention to prevent me from having any biological children in the future. Luckily for me, ties are very small and light and I'm used to playing rugby with men twice their size and getting battered and bruised. Their punching and kicking didn't do much damage and I was able to dodge a girl stomping and keep my bits intact. Surprisingly, at this point, I made a good decision. I apologised and paid the bill. The ties went back to being calm very quickly after this, like nothing had happened. I guess they are used to getting payment by force. Anyway, I made my way back outside and took a tuk-tuk back to my Airbnb where I made my final mistake of the night. I wasn't carrying any small banknotes. I only had a thousand baht note left and surprise, surprise, the tuk-tuk driver didn't have any change. I guess I should have gotten the driver to take me to 7-Eleven where I could buy something and get change, but I just wanted the night to come to an end. So I gave him the thousand baht note and went to bed. This was a very disappointing, painful and expensive first night in Thailand, but at least I learned a lot from it and I hope your viewers will too. <laughs> Quite an interesting story there. I think everybody, even I can remember all those years ago, you do get scammed when you've never been here before. You can watch as many videos as you want. You're still gonna get caught one way or the other. I, I got caught out in the very early days by bill padding like the guy in the other story there. Not too much, a little bit, and, and that was it. I, I learned my lesson from there. Okay, so that's just about it from me today. Guys, if you appreciate what I do, uh, there is a, a link in the description. You can buy me a coffee or two, or I've now got a QR code uh, on the front of the screen there. You can just tap your phone uh, and do the same thing. I, I do appreciate that. And uh, or you, you can become a member or uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I put these stories out every single Saturday and uh, hopefully they'll continue long into the future. Okay, thanks very much guys and uh, I'll catch you all next Saturday.